Luke chapter 10 and verse 30. Very familiar story here. But it says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him in his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. What I want to talk about this morning, I want to talk about the most effective charity. So we're in the time of year where charities really do a big push to get people, uh, you know, donating to them. And people are pretty easily, easily manipulated into giving towards charities and things during the holiday season because, you know, we feel guilty this time of year because let's just admit it, we like to indulge ourselves, don't we? And I'm not against giving to charities at all. If you give to charities, that's great, that's fine, that's wonderful. But I do think that there are, uh, there are more effective charities than some of the ones that are out there, you know, and, and we do, you know, we, we see the commercials and we see all the kids that probably aren't going to have a Christmas this year, you know. And have you ever been sitting there just eating and you see that commercial of the starving kids and stuff and it makes you feel bad? And uh, the ones I've seen too a lot that uh, I've seen around the Christmas, they'll play Christmas music and it'll be like sad Christmas music, real slow. And they're always showing these animals in slow motion that don't have homes. It's like, why do they have to show them in slow motion? I don't know, but it makes you feel more sorry for them, don't you? When you see them with these sad looks in their face and, oh man, you just want to give your money to these things, you know, to, to help these animals. And, and listen, if you love animals and you want to give to an animal shelter, I don't think you're a bad, I, I think that's fine. I think you're a nice person if you do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know, there's a more effective way to do charity. And I believe that is not when we just give money to organizations, but when we actually take care of things and take care of people ourselves, when it's personal, when it's us doing the charitable work and we have, we've been conditioned into feeling like we've been charitable, you know, because we just dropped some change into a red bucket. And that's one of the things that, you know, we do this time of year, you know, for the Salvation Army. And, you know, when was the last time you heard the Salvation Army out giving the gospel of salvation? You know, I mean, that's something to think about right there. You know, and, you know, when was the last time you went to Goodwill and they were proclaiming peace, goodwill toward men, which is where that phrase comes from, and telling the story of Jesus Christ? When was the last time you saw any of that? You don't see any of that. But we all know we're supposed to give to these things, and we do. You know, we feel bad because we just went and we spent a fortune on ourselves. And so what do we do? We drop our spare change into the bucket going out of Walmart, and we think we're good people because of it. You know, we think that we've been charitable, and we really helped somebody out. And I'm not saying you haven't helped. You know, I'm sure that change, it goes to some good causes and helps some people do some good things. But at the same time, it's better to be charitable. It's, it's better. It's more effective charity when you as an individual see a need that someone has like this good Samaritan did and you go and you take care of it yourself when you help it yourself. Because it, charity, is, it's more than just throwing money at something or someone. You know, it's actually giving them what they need. And you know, and sometimes it means some sacrifice on your part. It means some inconvenience. Notice how, you know, this Levite uh, you know, and the priest, they went, they went another way. Why? They didn't want to be inconvenienced by this man who's been beat up. They know this man needs help, but, you know, they got places to go. They've got things to do. You know, maybe it was the holiday season then they were going Christmas shopping. You know, I don't know. They were, they were in a hurry. And so, you know, they, let's just act like we didn't see it. And then who knows, they probably went and put an extra dollar you know, in a Salvation Army bucket after that, you know, and they, hopefully they'll get to that guy <laughs> and help him out. I gave to the charity, I helped make it happen. You know, maybe they put in an extra $10 in the offering plate that Sunday. I don't know, who, who knows 
what they did. But, you know, I think we often do more harm than good by just throwing money at people. Because there are, there's a lot of people out there, you know, we do, uh, and this is another message for another day, but sometimes we're just enabling people. Sometimes people are, they're just being bums and they're being lazy. And if you do, if you just are throwing money at these people just to ease your conscience, you realize you're not really helping them. And a lot of these people too, they're just going to take that cash and they're going to go spend it on drugs, you know, and you're, you just help make them worse. Because you didn't actually take the time to find out what they really need, to see what their needs are. Hey, you know, why is it that you, who look like an able-bodied man, can't just go out and get a job? What's going on? You know, we don't know. We don't talk to people. It's just easier. Here, here's five bucks. Or here's ten bucks. And then we can we go away feeling very satisfied with ourselves, fe- feeling very good about ourselves. And I'm telling you, you know, there, there's, there's a problem... When it comes to charities, you know, there's a lot of middlemen in there. There's not much accountability many times. In fact, if you actually start doing some research on a lot of, you know, these big things, you know, the Salvation Army or even the Red Cross, things like that, and how much of your donation actually goes towards helping victims, it's a pretty small percentage. I mean, whenever you hear about an earthquake going on in another country, you know, we're always heartbroken by seeing the images. And so we do, you know, we give money to the Red Cross and people like that. But you know how much political junk is in that group right there? And so because of that, I mean, not much of your money is actually going towards helping victims. I mean, I personally believe if you actually want to help victims in another country, you're better off directly sending your money to a missionary that's over there. You know, find a good Baptist missionary over there and send to them. They'll spend all of the money on helping people over there. All of it. They don't have all the politics of things. They don't. And, and then a lot of times these missionaries, you know, we know them personally as people that have been through our church. So there's accountability there. And, you know, they don't have this staff that they have to make sure is, you know, racially diverse and has people of every sexual orientation in there and, you know, have all these human resource people and all that that just waste money. And, but unfortunately, that's what people give to. They'll give their 10, 20, maybe 50 bucks towards these things. And they think I am a charitable person, but charity is so much more than that. And there, and when you deal with it yourself, it helps because there needs to be or there is no accountability in many of these things. It's the same thing even with missionaries in many churches today. A lot of missionaries, they have very little accountability. Oh, their mission board keeps track. Well, not, no, they don't. Not in a lot of cases. And I have heard some horrible stories about missionaries who are collecting thousands of dollars a month from churches who are doing basically nothing. I talked to one pastor who... Uh, he started. He, he took over a church and started looking at the, where all the missions money was going in this church. And he starts looking at prayer letters. And he, they hadn't gotten prayer letters for some of these people in years. And so he, there was one in particular. It was a church planner in the United States that they had been supporting for years. I mean, the guy had been cashing the checks. And he went and tried to find out you know, who this guy is, where he was at. He contacted the sending church. He, he can't get a hold of anybody. He can't find out anything from this guy. I mean, and I mean, no telling what he was doing for years and years and years. No accountability. And finally, you know, he just started you know, dropping all these missionaries. And then some of them, after they got dropped, all of a sudden contact them. Hey, where's our money? You know, but, but a lot of them, you, know, you have no idea what they're doing. And, and, and churches today, I personally think, and this is kind of a, a, another subject here, but I believe that churches today, that their missions program is basically like another charity that people give to because we know we're supposed to be winning souls. And we don't want to do it ourselves. So you know what? Let's just give money to missions and let somebody else do it. But the problem is people who don't soul win, who just throw their money at something, If you're that careless about it, you're probably not going to hold that guy accountable either. You're just giving that money to ease your conscience because you're not doing it yourself. And you know what? Those missionaries probably aren't either. And it is, it's amazing. Sometimes my wife and I, we get some of these mission letters, not from ones we support. And we're laughing at, I mean, it's, it's almost funny 
the highlights of their month, what they accomplished. And it's like, they're almost bragging on how they accomplished nothing. And we're like, and these people are getting thousands a month in support. And it's like, why do they do that? And it's because there's a lot of big, rich churches, people with a lot of money that they do. They give all this money towards spreading the gospel because they don't want to do it themselves. And let, I'm for giving out money or I'm for giving money to missions. I'm for helping get the gospel around the world. There's parts of the world I can't get to. And we want to help people get over there. But you know what? The most effective thing I can do to get the gospel out is me doing it myself. Myself going out and knocking on somebody's door and giving them the gospel, you know, being involved right here in your own local church. That's the most effective way to get things done. And we do. We just, so we, we just like to throw money at things. And so when it comes to charity and being charitable, you know, nobody counts it as charity if you're taking care of your family. Because I think everybody, you know, recognizes the fact that it's our obligation to take care of our family. And, you know, charity is something that you, you do. It's when you do something that's not expected of you or that's not required of you. OK, I'm not being charitable when I pay my taxes. OK, I'm forced to pay my taxes. OK, I don't do that out of the goodness of my heart. If I could exempt myself from it, I would exempt myself from it because I don't I don't trust the IRS. I don't trust our government. I'm not being charitable when I pay my taxes. OK, that's required of me. But it's when it's when we do things that are not required of us. When we do things that are not expected of us, that's when we're actually being charitable. And we ought to be charitable to our spiritual family. Turn over to 1 John chapter 3. I want to read a few scriptures to you just about people we should be charitable to. 1 John 3.11 says, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwells the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And this is and talking about your physical brother. I believe it's talking about your spiritual brother. And if you see that somebody in the church, one of your spiritual brothers or sisters in Christ, if they have a need and you have this world's good, you have what they need to take care of their problem. You know what? You ought to, you ought to give. You ought to be charitable. You ought to help them out. That's what charity is is we ought to help, we ought to be charitable not just to our brothers and sisters in Christ, but we ought to be charitable towards our neighbors. Second, or, uh, Turn over to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. But it says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So we have Jesus who, you know, he came and he died for the world. He came and he died for the sinful. He died for those who weren't going to accept him as their savior. He died for those who spit on him and who nailed him to the cross. Jesus Christ, he did that. And you know what? We ought to have the same kind of attitude towards other people. We shouldn't be looking at our own things, but we should be looking at other people's things and how, how we can help them. What can I do to help other people? And we ought to be charitable to our neighbors. But here's the thing. If you're going to be charitable towards your brothers and sisters in Christ, you've got to know what's going on in their lives. You've got to be able to recognize the need. That means you're going to need to be around them. It means you're going to need to be in church. You're going to have to be paying attention. If you're going to know what your neighbor's needs are, you're going to have to get to know your, know your neighbor. You're going to have to pay attention you're going to have to be looking out for them. So you'll know what's needed. And we ought to even be charitable to strangers. Hebrews 13 verse 1 says, Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. So even people that we don't know, we ought to be charitable to. But how are we going to do this? How can we be charitable towards people we don't know? Is that by throwing money in the you know, change in the Salvation Army bucket? And hoping they take care of the strangers and the people we don't know. 
I believe it's just talking about you personally doing it. You personally meeting the needs of other people. That is the most effective way to be charitable is this time of year. Don't just go throwing your cash all over the place. Actually pay attention to what's going on in people's lives and say, hey, how can I be a help to that person? If you see a need, what can I do to make a difference? Because you, you can take your 20 bucks and you could just throw it towards an organization that's going to ha- where a lot of that money is going to go towards administrative costs and things like that. And it's going to go nowhere. Or you can take that 20 bucks and have 100% of it go towards meeting someone's actual need. Someone that you see, someone that you know, some of you're paying att- that you can you're actually paying attention to. There is no need for a third party. Notice in Luke chapter 10, go back to Luke chapter 10 in verse 33 is um says, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him in an inn, and took care of him. He did all these things himself. He didn't just give money to the charity. He did it himself. No need for a third party. So, and whatever you do, when you give towards a third party, some of that money is going away. It's more effective if you just deal it with yourself. The third party, they might not have done things according to his desire. You know, a third party, they're not the one making the sacrifice, so they're not going to care as much about how things are done with the money. Okay, you all have seen it with your own kids, haven't you? They're very free and quick to spend your money, but how are they when it comes to maybe their own money, money that they earned? I was like Brother Benes telling me about his son. How many? How much were those jeans he wanted? Like a hundred bucks or fifty bucks or something? Yeah, one hundred and twenty. Yeah, one hundred and twenty dollars for a pair of jeans. He wanted his dad to buy a one hundred and twenty dollar pair of jeans, but then he went and he earned some money on his own. And then his dad's like, "Hey, you want to go buy those jeans now?" And he's like, "No way." <laughs> and we do. When you work for something, you're not just going to go throw that money away. But when people are just have money handed to them. For nothing, they aren't, they're not going to care. And so if I want, you know, my money that I earn, that I work for, if I want it to be a help to somebody, I would rather help them myself so I can see how that money's spent. Because if I just go and give it to someone else and say, hey, you do something with it, they're not going to care as much. They might, you know, be extravagant and, and do things that are completely unnecessary. And so it is, it's better when you do it yourself. And that's what the Samaritan did. He went and he did it himself. He bound up his wounds. You know, he brought him to the end. He took care of these things himself. And so the third party, they're not, they're not making a sacrifice. The third party is only going to take away from what you're trying to give. Notice in verse 35, okay? Now, sometimes it comes to a point where maybe you can't help. You can't do it. You might have to give towards you know, another organization. You might have to have a third party involved. And so we don't know everything that was going on with the Samaritan, but notice, you know, he's got to move on. He's got to go, but you know what? He's made it his responsibility to take care of this man who's been beat up. And it says in verse 35, and on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. So notice, he, sometimes you do have to have the third party involved. Okay? But understand, though, that, you know, that guy, that third party that he paid, you know, some of that money went towards himself. Some of that money would have went towards, you know, taking care of his own needs on top of taking care of that man's needs. I mean, that's, that's just fair, okay? If I start a charity towards, you know, helping orphans or something, okay? And I'm getting people to give. Well, if I'm the one that's doing all the work, I should be getting paid, right? I mean, I got, I have needs too. I've got to eat too, right? I should be getting something from that. It's not that it's not fair that that man took from that, but it is you know, when there is a third party involved. Just understand, you're not as much of your money is going towards that individual, and so as much as you possibly can, you ought to try to take care of people's needs. You ought to be watching and you yourself ought to go and say, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going, I'm going to buy, you know, whatever that person needs. You know, I'm, I'm going to do this myself. That's the most effective way. 
And so in order to be charitable, you can't just live in your own little world. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24 you know, every pastor's uh, you know, favorite verse in the Bible. Let me go and turn over there. Make sure I quote everything right on. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24. It says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Let us consider one another. We're thinking about each other. We're trying to do, you know, we're trying to help each other out. We're trying to provoke each other to love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. You know, there are many people today who they don't come to church because it's like, I don't get anything out of it. Well, you know what? Why don't you go to give? Why don't you go to encourage other people? That's what the Bible says to do. We've got such a selfish, you know, entitlement mentality today that people, everything they do, everything that's out there, it's like, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? That's not a charitable attitude. And many people, when they go into church, their attitude is, what's in it for me? But we ought to go to church. Part of why we are here is, hey, what can I do for other people? How can I be a blessing to other people? How can I encourage other people? But most people are living in their own little world where they are king, where they are number one. They never are even thinking about the needs of anyone else. And so it doesn't matter if they're having a bad day, if they just don't feel like it, or if they just rather sleep in a little bit. I'm not going to go to church. I would rather watch TV today. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, they're, they're not worried about does somebody in the church need encouragement? Does the preacher need encouragement? Is there any place where I could help in the church? That's not their attitude. And people today, one of the reasons they're not charitable is they are living in their own little world. They can't see past the nose of their own face. But you know, one of the way, I think that's one of the reasons we ought to be a part of a church. We're supposed to help. We have a special obligation to help our brothers and sisters in Christ. But if we're never around them, how are we supposed to know what their needs are? That's why you need to be in church. That's why you need to be around God's people. That's why you need to fellowship with one another. So we will know what's going on. And it's not just about the financial things. Okay, It's sometimes people, they, maybe they just need emotional help. Sometimes people just need a friend. Sometimes people just need somebody. Maybe they just need a shoulder to cry on. Who knows what it is, but we've got to be there for them. We've got to be paying attention to what's going on. And you, you need to pay attention to your neighbors. You know, look what's going on. If you've noticed their house has been, it's been like a blackout there and dark, you know, for days, maybe they got their electricity turned out, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, maybe see if you can do something to help them out. But how are we today when we see someone in need? We like to ignore it because, you know, we don't want to help. We don't want to have to sacrifice. We don't want to have to give up something of our own. You know, we, you know, we, you ought to get to know your coworkers. You ought to, you ought to get to know people. You ought to actually have conversations with people and find out what's going on in their lives. Who knows? I mean, how would you like it if your coworker, you found out committed suicide, you know, just struggling from depression, you know, you could have helped. Maybe if they had had a friend, they would have had something to live for. Maybe if, if you would have got to know them a little bit, you'd have had an opportunity to give them the gospel. But we don't, we don't think about anything other than ourselves. But we do that. We just need to learn to just have our eyes open. Okay. Be careful to entertain strangers. Okay. We ought to be watching. So even when you're out and about, if you see a need, if you see something going on, when you see that person in Walmart in front of you and they're a dollar short or something, or, or you know, and maybe, they're, maybe they're buying something and they're, they're doing that awkward thing where they're running their card through. I don't know why no money's, you know, going through. You know what? Nothing wrong with you paying for it. Hey, I got this. You know, let me take care of it. Nothing wrong with you doing something like that. That's actually being charitable. I don't even know who they are. You know, so what? You know, some have entertained angels unawares. You don't know. God might have them in front of you. Maybe he's testing you. Maybe God wants to give you a blessing, but you know what? He's going to make you earn it. He's going to make you do something for it. Let's just see if these people are going to pay attention, but you, you got to be watching. You got to be paying attention. You know, when you see that lady that's, you know, struggling to maybe, you know, load something up into her car at the store, go over there and help her out. Pay attention to what's going on in people's lives. If, you know, if you see an old lady laying on the ground, don't just walk past her, you know, go, go help her out. And have you seen these videos in the cities before where there's people, you know, they're, they're passed out on the ground and they'll get hit by a car or something and everybody's just walking by like nothing. 
They're pretending they don't see while they're looking on their staring on their cell phones. You know, I mean, we've got to get past that. We are, as Christians, we ought to be better than that. And we've got, but we've got to be paying attention. And most of us, we haven't done anything charitable in years. And it's not because we didn't have any opportunities. It's because we just weren't paying attention. If you haven't done anything charitable in the last year like that, it's probably because you haven't been paying attention. It's not because there's never been any need. It's not because you know nothing's happened. It's because we're just acting like the rest of our stinking culture and we can't see past the nose in our face or we can't see past the cell phone that's in front of our face. That's our problem. And we need to learn to pay attention to the needs of other people. But you can't do that if you're in your own little world. Get involved in something. So being a part of a church is a great thing. And you know, we've got to learn to be observant. You know, look not every man on his own thing. But everything, every man also on the things of others. Be paying attention. Don't be just sitting around obsessing, you know, what do I need for this time of year? Hey, you know, what does somebody else need? What can I do to actually be a help? And you do it personally. You take care of it. Don't just give it to that organization. You know, if you love animals, you know, don't just give the money to the animal shelter. You know, go take in that stray cat. You know, go ahead and adopt that dog. All right, if you're into that, you know, I mean, you know, go, go ahead and, and, and do those things. You know, it would be more effective because I promise, I promise you can take care of an animal way cheaper than you can pay me to take care of an animal because I'm going to charge a lot. If I have to take, if I have to take care of somebody's dog or something like that, you don't want to see the rent I'm going to charge <laughs> on something like that. And you know, who, some of these animal shelter people might be the same way too, but it is, you know, and when you you know, animals, they aren't, they're not that expensive. Okay. We've got two cats and they don't cost a lot of money. All right. I hate saying that right now in, in public in front of my wife, cause I like to complain every time we have to spend any money on them. But at the same time, they're not that expensive, but I wonder how much it costs to run these animal shelters. You know, because they got all these employees and things are paying. And I'm just saying, and I'm, I'm just saying all that to just show how you taking care of something personally yourself is so much more effective. But we live in a society today that we think, you know, we got to give to all these, you know, 501c3 organizations. And a lot of that money is just being wasted. And we would be more effective. In fact, if God's people would just actually be charitable, start paying attention, and, you know, a lot of these charities would probably go out of business because they wouldn't have anybody to be charitable to. There would be no need for them. But unfortunately, it is. It's just easier to just drop a 20 here, write a check for 50 there or whatever, and then just say, I'm charitable, and then not do anything personally. But that, unfortunately, is not charity. You know, for it to be charity, there needs to be some sacrifice. You know, and you might be able to, you know, write that check 50, 100, or some people might even be able to, you know, do some of the big, you know, four digits or something. And it's not even a sacrifice for them, but actually taking time and at meeting the needs of somebody that is, that's going to be a sacrifice. And so, you know, don't try to fix the whole world through charity, but be willing to do what you can do that. And that's the key. Look at Mark chapter 14, turn over to Mark chapter 14. And we'll start reading in verse three. I, I like this passage of scripture here. Cause that, you know, that's the thing. It is. Let's, just, you know, let's, I'll admit it. It's a struggle sometimes just to take care of your own family. But a lot of the needs that people have too, they don't eat, they don't cost money. You know, in, in many cases. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, being charitable, you know, meeting the needs, we can't fix the whole world. There's no one person in here. You know, you can't, you can't solve everybody's problems. Okay. You can't, nobody can do that. But look what it says in Mark chapter 14, verse 3. It says, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment and sp of spikenard, very precious, and she break the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor. Everybody always likes to act like they're real charitable, but these people are just greedy. Okay, and we know from another gospel it was Judas that said this, and we know that Judas was a thief. All right, he or he was either he was a, bad, a robber, he was a bad guy, and uh, he was just somebody that was looking to see what he could get for himself. He wasn't thinking about the poor, 
And it says, and they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor always with, or with you always. And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. Notice two things he said there. One, he said, yeah, you always have the poor with you. And whensoever ye would, whenever you want. We are not legally, according to biblical law, necessarily required to meet the needs of every poor person. But you know what? Jesus said, whenever you want, you can help them. And if we would, if we would just sometimes help, if we would just sometimes try to make a difference, and especially if we would do what this woman did, notice what he said. He said, she hath done what she could. This is what she's able to do. And I wonder how much of us even do what we're able to do. I'm not asking you to do something you're not able to do. I'm not asking you to, you know, buy the Christmas presents of every poor kid in town. Nobody's asking you to do that. But what if you, everybody in here would just do what they could do? If we would just do what we're capable of doing. We see, I don't have the verse in front of me. The Apostle Paul, he was referring to a church that had given out of their deep poverty and he mentioned how they gave not just of their own power, but above their own power. What does that mean? These people, they did what they could to the point where it's like God bless them. And they did even more than they should have been able to do. And I believe if we would, if we would have that charitable attitude, I believe God would help us accomplish some great things. We wouldn't be putting, if, you know, I said a lot of these charities, I think it's like putting your money into a bag with holes in it. But I believe if we would do these things ourselves, it would be so much more effective. And we would, we would do greater things than a lot of these charities. We would do greater things with almost no money than some of these charitable organizations do that have you know, thousands and thousands of dollars given to them. Because God would help us. And it is. It's just, it's more effective. And so, you know, the charity, once again, the charity that many people need, it, it might not even cost money. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou should be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Okay, this is talking about somebody here that you know they're struggling you know, spiritually. They're having some problems. But notice how he says, you know, bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Sometimes we need to help some people out. Somebody, sometimes people need some help spiritually. And you know what? Sometimes people might need some help physically. They might need some help mentally. They might just need that you know, listening ear. They might just need that shoulder to cry on. They might need somebody who will talk to them on the phone for a little while. Somebody who will send them a text or send them a card. Who knows? Some people just need to know that somebody cares about them and that they're important to someone. That's all they need. They just need somebody paying attention to them. Some people, they might need, you know, actual physical help on a project. You know, it, they, don't, they don't need your money. They just need you to come help them out. And, you know, some people, they might just need a visit to the hospital. You know, you visit, are you, are you visiting them at the hospital? You know, that can do more than a lot of medicine can do. You know how many people are taking medicine and all kinds of things just because of their depression and anxiety and all these things? Or maybe if somebody just showed they loved them and showed they cared about them, it would help them out. Look, I've visited many people in the hospital and I've talked to many people who, I mean, they will talk about all those who came and visited them in the hospital. And you know what they, I, I've heard many people talk about all the people that came and visited them in the hospital. And you know what they never talk about? All those doctors that gave them shots and gave them medicine and things like that that's probably maybe what actually cured them. They talk about all the people who came and visited them and how much it helped them. You know why? Because it lifted their spirits. It was what they, it was what they really needed. Not saying they didn't have a physical problem, but that is that, that emotional help is huge. And I'm not a doctor. I can't help anybody on the, phys, on the physical thing. But you know what? I can just try to be an encouragement. I can give somebody a visit. And those things don't cost money. They do cost some time. And you know, it might cost a little bit of money to go and buy those flowers, but you know, and people do, that means a lot to people and they're in the hospital and they've got some flowers and some balloons. It makes them feel important. And those things, they, they are, they're more help than you'll ever know. 
Matthew 25, 35, Jesus said, For I was a hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye gave me medicine. And he says, I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. So just that visiting, going and seeing somebody, that is that can be huge. That can be make a big difference. And I've, I've seen it before when you know, large numbers of people help somebody with a project. Usually what they appreciated more, it wasn't so much all the work that got accomplished. It was just that all the people came and helped them. It made them feel important. It made them feel loved. And that's what, that, you know, that's what people need. You know, if somebody needs help on a project or something, listen, you don't have to be the skilled carpenter. You know, just, just show up. And do whatever you can do, even if it's just to, you know, be the one telling jokes and keeping everybody in a good mood or something. Just the fact that you're there, it means stuff to people and it makes a difference. Even if you're not skilled, you might be pathetic at, at some of those things, but just being there, it makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, it's, you know people, they don't, they don't add up. Usually some people might do this, but usually after Christmas, they're not adding up the costs or the value of the gifts that they received. But, you know, they do count, what they do pay attention is, you know, who gave them gifts, you know, who showed up at their birthday party, you know, things like that. You know, who is it that showed me that they cared about me? That's what's important. I've talked to many people who had this surprise birthday party, things like that. They never talk about the gifts. They always talk about who all came. Because that's what really means something. That's what's important. And so I say all this is it. Being charitable with your time and your presence is one of the most charitable things you can do. Actually being there. Showing up somewhere. But once again, you're going to have to start looking past the nose on your face. You're going to have to pay attention to what's going on. You're going to have to be listening to what people are saying and actually caring about what other people need. That's what you're going to have to do if you're going to be charitable. And charity needs to be personal because, you know, it, once again, part of the reason we want to be charitable as Christians, we want to be a witness, don't we? And if somebody's going to be, if somebody's going to get saved, they've got to have a witness. They've got to have somebody who's preaching the gospel. And you know what? The Salvation Army is not going to give anyone the gospel. They're not going, you know, goodwill is not going to give anyone the gospel. We've been to Goodwill many times. We do a lot of our shopping there. Nobody ever gave us the gospel there. I saw one of our flyers on their bulletin board there one time. That was, that was the closest thing that ever happened <laughs> to getting the, gospel at good, getting the gospel at Goodwill. But, you know, uh, you know it said, and a charitable spirit, it will help us when we give the gospel. People are going to be more likely to listen to somebody that they know cares about them. You know, when we go knocking doors, many people, when we start talking, to them, they're skeptical because it's always like, what do these people want from me? And the whole time we're talking to them, they're trying to figure out what do these people want from me? That's what they're thinking. And no, we want to give people the gospel, but it's sometimes hard to you know, express that to them. And wouldn't it be nice if you knocked on somebody's door? And it happened to be somebody that you helped on the side of the road change a flat tire. You know, what if you knocked on somebody's door and it just happened to be the person that, you know, you paid for their stuff when their card wasn't going through? I mean, wouldn't that, don't you think that would have a huge impact? You know, when you're doing charitable things, you know, that's a good opportunity. Hey, invite people, you know, come visit my church, Liberty Baptist Church. And, you know, the chances of you knocking on their door are pretty slim. But you know what? The chances of somebody from our church knocking on their door is not that slim. And if they've heard about this church, they've been invited to this church by people that have been charitable to them. Maybe when we come to their door, they won't have the attitude of what are these people trying to get from me? And maybe they'll listen to what we have to say. Because it's like some of these people, too, they've let me give them the gospel before. But it's like the whole time, it's like they're thinking, what's the catch? What's the catch? I know you people want something from me. Like, no, we really, we want to give you the gospel. We want to see you get saved. But it, it, does, it helps a lot if we have been charitable. And so there's, there's no sin. There's no sin in giving to charity. I think, it's, I think it's fine. It's a good thing. But don't think because you give a little extra to some charity that that means that you're in the clear this holiday season. 
being charitable, it is so much more than just writing a check. It means learning how to see past the nose in your own face and how to know and learning how to notice the needs of other people and then trying to figure out how you can fulfill those needs. And the way you fulfill people's needs too, once again, when you see that need, if God puts it on your heart, if God reveals it to you, if he gives you that burden, it's probably because he wants you to do something about it. And keep that in mind, because I've had people before who've noticed a need and then they want to come. It's like, hey, the church needs to do this or, you know, you know, you need to do, hey, you spotted the need. You figure out how to, you figure out how to take care of it. You know, don't put it on somebody else. You figure it out. But, you know, the less personal charities are, I believe the less effective they are. And it is, it's important that we be involved if we really want to make a difference. I don't have a lot of money to give to charity. I don't. But I want to be charitable. I want to make a difference. I want to have help. So since I can't write the big checks, I've got to be smarter about it. And so you know what that means? It means I have to personally get involved. I've personally got to try to do what I can to meet the need myself. And I believe that that is the most effective charity. You personally meeting the needs and taking care of things yourself like that good Samaritan did. So with that, let's all stand together.